friends and Christians on this Monday Thursday morn. Monday Thursday is the day in Holy Week where we commemorate uh, in worship the Last Supper of Christ, uh, the communion that existed and flowed out from that Last Supper in the upper room, and also where Christ washed the feet of the disciples. Mondi comes from the Latin, most observers believe, mandatum novum do vobis, a new commandment I give to you. And it uh, comes from John 13th chapter 34 through 35. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I've loved you, you are also to love one another. By this all people will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Love in that first in that first last supper, the first last supper, uh, if we look at that today, this is from Lorenzo Monaco, the last supper, and you can see that uh, social distancing is not the order of the day. You can see that the distance between the disciples, they're in intimate connection with one another. As Jesus says, a new commandment I give to you. Which sounds like the law, the prophets, uh, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbors yourself. Upon these two laws hang all the, upon all these scriptures hang all the law and the prophets, as Jesus himself said. Uh, but this is a new command, a new commandment, mandatum novum, mandatum, uh, a commandment, what we get the English word mandate from. And so this, this Monday Thursday, as we are not able to gather to have communion, as is our custom, or to serve one another, uh, as is commemorated, uh, as we follow the example of the towel and the basin with uh, Jesus, we see we are unable to enter into the upper room together in intimate quarters. This, again, is a violation of every social distancing, touching the cup and the, uh, the bread. As we've learned, communion can be difficult, but we're learning how to do it in our digital upper rooms all over the world. College Place, we are connected in ways we never thought possible, but we have to re-envision what it means to love one another and to serve one another, to love one another in intimate gatherings, to be the gathered body of Christ. The new commandment, St. Augustine had us think about in his 65th tractate, the Lord Jesus declares he's giving his disciples a new commandment. A new commandment, I give unto you that you love one another. But was this not already commanded by the ancient law of God, where it was written, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself? Why then is it called a new one by the Lord, when it is proved to be so old? Is it on this account a new commandment, because he hath divested us of the old and clothed us with the new man? Jesus goes on to contrast, uh, St. Augustine contrasts uh, the love of the human with the love of Jesus. And that's what's being depicted in, in the Maundy Thursday uh, liturgies. This new commandment in light, in the eve of Christ's suffering on the cross on Good Friday and the resurrection, love is being renewed. Love is being remade. Love is shown as the destiny for the body of Christ, not death. Jesus will put to death, death on the cross, and love, the love that God has for Christ, and the love that Christ has for God, will take Jesus to the cross. But the same love that we have, if we love one another as Christ loved us, and we love Christ, then we too will be taken with the love of Christ through our crosses, through our suffering, and be taken uh, into resurrection. It's love that leads us to the cross if we follow Christ this Holy Week, and it's love that will raise us up 
Love is being renewed. That's why it's a new commandment, as St. Augustine says. Christ, therefore, has given us a new commandment, this new commandment that we should love one another as he loved us. This is the love that renews us, this resurrection love, the love that Christ had and that God hath by raising Christ from death has turned love into the most powerful force uh, in existence in heaven and earth, not death. Death is no longer uh, what destroys us. It is the love that we share together in loving one another and loving Christ and loving God. That same love that took Christ to the cross will take us with him through resurrection, through death, to new life. This is the love that renews us, St. Augustine says, making us new men, heirs of the New Testament, singers of the new song. It's as if our song has shifted because of this new commandment, the new focus on love, the new reality of love after the resurrection means that we have the old song to sing in a new key, in a higher key. It was this love that renewed those in olden time who were then the righteous, the patriarchs and the prophets, and as it did afterwards, the blessed apostles. But this love too, the love that took Jesus to the cross in obedience, the love that raised Jesus from the dead in the resurrection, this same love, if we shall love one another as Christ loved us, will renew the nations, will renew all the races of man which overspread all the earth, and is making and gathering together a new people. We are a new people being gathered by this new commandment, this new love that is reigning triumphant over death and putting to death death and making love the source of our abundant and eternal life. This is the Monday Thursday powerful message. Even if we are scattered, and cannot gather together, we continue to partake of the love. If we shall love the Lord our God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbor as ourself, we serve our neighbor in finding new ways. We may not be touching each other in the same way. We may not be touching the cup. But the prayer of communion, the prayer of the very picture of Christ's resurrection and new life in the communion, that prayer is that we pray to the Holy Spirit, Make us be, for the world, the body of Christ, broken out for the service and forgiveness of sins. May we be the cup poured out. May we be the bread uh, that sustains people. May we be the towel in the basin of service in new ways, even if we can't gather together on Monday, Thursday, in this kind of intimacy, sharing communion, sharing the towel in the basin. Uh, we know that we share in the same loving power that raised Christ from the dead, and we will be raised likewise as we experience this coronavirus. Uh, let us come to the Good Friday message, which we share tomorrow uh, at 6 p.m. at College Place. And on Sunday, the blessed hallelujahs will ring out, Christ the Lord is risen today, hallelujah, at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Let us gather together and tonight, as we gather uh, digitally across the world, may we too be reminded that it is Christ's love that has sustained us and will remain and renew us, even as death surrounds us in the coronavirus throughout the world. We know that love has the last say. And if we shall love one another, as Christ love us, love us, we shall be renewed and experience both abundant life now and eternal life to come. Thank you for reflecting with me on these powerful Monday Thursday themes. And we pray that you will find a renewing love, whether you are scattered or gathered with the ones you love. We are all gathered with the body of Christ, and love is the most powerful of all viral connections that we can ever experience. Let's experience that love. I pray you experience that love. I love you wherever you are. If you are a member of my congregation or my friends, I love you in the name of the Lord. Thanks be to Jesus for all that he has given to us. And I pray that we will go forward 
through this crucifixion time, through this Lenten suffering time, that we will experience a powerful, renewing love that renews us as new creatures and promises to renew all of creation. In Jesus' name we pray, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy 